you want to ship something to a friend or maybe a customer and you need an insulated box and you've got these priority mailboxes, but they don't come insulated. So I'm going to show you how to do that. All right, well, got to figure out how to start this. Last week, no. going to send some fish to a friend and I'm going to use one of these priority mailboxes. These are the flat rate boxes. This is the medium size flat rate. Loads from the top. There's two flat rates. The other loads from the ends and I need a liner. Okay. Now you can buy liner kits, but if you're selling fish, that's going to up your price a little bit on your cost. The boxes here are free. You just pay the flat rate to ship it. And I think these boxes ship uh, if you have if you're selling them through eBay for about 16 bucks and it's about 1850 if you walk into the post office with it and that's what I'm gonna do is walk into the post office with it because this is not an eBay sale so what do I need well lucky enough I've got a big sheet of this half inch styrofoam and then I I'm lucky enough to have this drywall t-square because I used to do a lot of construction work and then you're going to need something sharp. And I happen to have this utility knife. So a sharp blade helps. Um, anything, you know, anything sharp will work. I mean, if you've got a sharp kitchen knife, sharp enough to cut through the styrofoam. Tape measure is he helpful. This also has measurements on it, so I can use that. And a cup of coffee is always a good thing. You could cut it on the garage floor, patio, you know, the patio, whatever. I like cutting on a, a sheet of plywood because it's easier on the knife blade. So we can add a Sharpie or some other marking device to this too. Um, easy way to do this, well, first off, the measurements are on the box somewhere. Um, the in, and we need the inside dimensions. And, and if we look, let me get a little closer here. In this bottom corner of the box, it says ID, inside dimensions, OD, outside dimensions, so ID. So we need 11 inches by eight and a half inches. So 11 inches this way, eight and a half inches this way, and then five by five inches top to bottom. Make a mark at eight and a half inches, and I'm gonna cut the long, cut it long ways. I should be able to get both the top and the bottom out of this. There, what we need are, are six pieces. We need a top, we need a bottom. You like that, huh? Uh, upside down, that's the way my brain works sometimes. I have a hard time with right from left. And then we're gonna need four sides. So we need six pieces, right? Uh, this T-square, there's the eight and a half inch mark. And there's the zero mark on the other side of this. And the nice thing about that is the side I'm cutting on, I want what's under the metal. It's protecting the cut. That's why these things are so cool for drywall. You're protecting the, the side, you know, the, the side you want. Uh, so let's see here. Here we are. That's uh, eight and a half inches, and we can double check. Yeah, eight and a half inches. Might be just a hair over, so it's going to be a snug fit. And then by, what did I say? 11 inches, 11 inches. So easy, easy enough. And there is 11 inches. So yeah, I should be able to get two pieces out of this top and bottom. Eight and a half by 11. by 11. Alright, let's try one to see how it fits. Before we get too ahead of ourselves. There we go, a really nice tight snug fit for the bottom. And we'll assume the top fits too. Yeah, fits that way, fits that way, so that's good. Alright, now we need the sides. Alright, let's see. We can get one end out of this. We'll cut the ends first, then we'll put the sides in. It could go either way. So, in fact, I'm going to use. I'm going to cut the sides last. Let the let the. Or I'm sorry. Cut the ends last. Let the sides 
hold the ends in place. And so what we need, um, again, 11 inches, right? The same, same length of the box. Get this stuff out of the way here. Okay. But we need to take into consideration the top and the bottom. So I said it's half inch. The best thing to do, instead of trying to figure it out one side at a time, put the two pieces together, and it's more than half an inch, it's seven eighths of an inch. So we need uh, 5.5 .5 inches, which is five and a half inches, uh, minus seven eighths of an inch. So let's see, a half an inch is, uh, what, four eighths? Yeah, okay, this is where I have to do some arithmetic because otherwise I'm gonna blow it. So that should be, if I'm counting right, four and three eighths. I'm gonna stick this in here. I'm gonna stick a small piece in here. So now I've got the two pieces stacked on the bottom because my fractions suck. And measure to the top and it says it's showing four and a half. So I think I can cut a piece four and a half uh, and that, that should fit. So let, let's give that a shot. And the last time I did this, I went looking for scraps and I cut the lid, so sometimes it's just worth marking stuff so that uh, <laughs> you don't make the same mistake. I, yeah, I did. So what did I say? Four and a half inches. All right. So let's cut this four and a half inches and see what we can get out of it. We'll put that, set it here to four and a half inches. Make sure it's square along the edge and uh, hold some pressure down. Take your time. You do not want it, your blade to slip over the top and cut your thumb off because that sucks too. And there we are, four and a half inches. So let's see, we need uh, two pieces at 11. Start from the bottom. And we'll move that a little more. Okay, at 11 down here. There's one. And before I cut a second one, let's try it. That fits the side just nice. And while we're at it, see that's a little, a little snug. So it should be a little less. Okay, that's gonna be a little snug. So I'm gonna have to make that a little less. And this is where I really didn't want to have to recut, but you know what they say, measure twice, cut once? Turns out that's bullshit. Um, I used to watch this woodworking show, and, and it was uh, traditional woodworking, a guy named Roy Underhill on the Woodwright Shop. And one of his guests said, measuring is the bane of accuracy. Best thing to do is fit. And I agree. So there we go. Now let's try this piece. Uh, did I? Yes. Yeah, see, I cut the I cut the next length, so I still need to cut this. So maybe I'll let this part out, or maybe I'll let you see what a doofus I am. Here we go. We needed to cut that anyway. All right. So we've skinnied that down to, um, yeah, about four and three eighths, what I, what I had said originally. There we go. Much better fit. One thing I haven't learned to do all the time is trust myself, and I really should. And that's going to be a good fit. All right, so four and three eighths was uh, the measurement. So this one just needs to be cut to 11. That's the other problem with the styrofoam is it's messy. There we go, two sides. Now all I need are uh, two ends. There's one. So let's uh, cut this to uh, four and three eighths by, what was that, five and a half? Oh, here we go again with the fractions, right? Let's, uh, I'm just gonna make a mark. Ideally, if it's snug, that's better. Don't want it loose and flopping around. So, 
if I don't cut enough off, I can always cut a little more off. So let's see how that fits. It's still a little tight. Yeah, I don't want to break it, so let's just trim a little. And then we'll use that measurement for the next one. There we go, perfect. There we, like that. So, let's see. Okay, I don't have another piece, so I'm gonna have to cut another, so I'm gonna cut it the long way. Let's get that out of here. Get the scrap out of here. I don't know, did I say that? I know I thought it, this stuff is messy. All the little beads breaking off. So let's see where we are here. Four and three eighths, yep. Yeah. And any leftovers I will save for the next box. So this is going to Jeff Pelham's Aquatics. I'll leave the link for his channel. Um, and go there and check it out. And I think he'll do an unboxing of what I send him which would be cool. So I'm not going to use a straight edge. I'm just going to go for it here. There we are. And let's see. That should fit there. And this one should fit here. Like that. With minimal screw-ups. And there's a lid. Like that. And that's it. So I'll put bags of fish and plants in here. Uh, if it's loose at all, I will stuff it with paper, because that's what I have, just some packing paper, just to keep everything from moving around. And, and that should handle it. So there we go. So when I'm all done, the little thin scraps of trimmings and stuff, I toss that. But these bigger pieces have actually come in handy for me before. So I'll save those for, for other things. Um, let me show you some other stuff. I bought a big sheet of this foam board insulation, and I've got it under some aquariums. And a friend of mine said uh, that probably shouldn't use it under aquariums because it absorbs water and it'll mold. However, it would be great for packing these boxes. And I'm not sure if you'd want to put the foil inside or the foil outside. I guess if it's hot, maybe put the foil or outside and it might reflect some of the, the heat and maybe put the foil inside during the winter months, you know, just a guess. My wife bought one of those uh, robot floor sweeper things and it came packed in all this thick foam. So what I did, I sent a box out with, with this stuff as the insulation. I peeled off here, you can see the scars. I peeled off the extra parts that wrap around the product and so it made a really nice thick, dense foam. So I cut those into pieces and used that for whatever it was that I shipped. I, 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 it was fish. Re, repurpose this stuff anytime you can. It's just better than tossing it in the trash right away. And, you know, I don't know. I, I don't like the peanuts. I, I wouldn't use those for anything that I can think of. But the sheets of styrofoam and that sheets of that kind of foam or this insulation, if you have to go buy it, you can buy four by eight sheets of that. And it may or may not be cheaper. I'd have to do the arithmetic. There's a place in Utah, and I'll have to get the name, and I'll put the link down there, where you can actually buy the kits uh, to, to fit the different size uh, USPS boxes. And I think they come in, in uh, uh, orders of, uh, God, I don't know, maybe it's 25. So you would get enough for 25 boxes. You'd get six pieces for, you know, to go for 25 boxes, all ready to go. Uh, that's another way to do this. All right, so there's a lot of different ways to do this. Be a little creative. And then uh, when I put bagged fish in there, I'll double bag them. And then, like I said, I'll, I'll stuff newspaper or anything. If, if it's a really loose fit, I'll uh, stick newspaper. That, you know, these, these are supposed to be uh, the priority two to three days. Be careful, because occasionally they'll go four days, maybe five. So know that. And then I'll also put that poly, I think it's called polyfiber. It's supposed to absorb ammonia. Put a little piece of that in each bag of fish too. That helps, at least it seems to help. All right, so the box is made, all right, ready to go. And I bagged up uh, three bags of plants. There's, I think, five Crypt Wendy I read in here. And then there's uh, four Jungle Valcinaria in here. Three of them are kind of small, one big one, and the one big one has a runner on it that's got three or four more on that. 
and then uh, three Amazon swords. And I went through these, all of them, and found a couple bladder snails and a couple uh, uh, bladder snail eggs. And I took the snails off, that's easy. And where I saw the eggs, I just took the whole leaf off. Um, and I try really hard. And I'm trying to find some stuff that's uh, kind of a snail, snail remover. And then I lost my scissors. So this is polyfilter. And this is supposed to remove ammonia and other uh, harmfuls that go in the in with the fish. So just a really small piece from what it sounds like. And it's uh, kind of a thick sponge. So I'm going to cut off uh, the end here because that'll be easier to deal with. And I'll put that in a Ziploc. So I'm just going to cut off a couple pieces that are about, about an inch. And we'll put the leftover in here. And I saw this done. I've never done it myself. So, and I think I might have said when it comes to this, I, right now, I have no idea what I'm doing as far as shipping fish. I've shipped lots of plants and have pretty good luck. I've, I think I've had two orders. I ship a lot of guppy grass and I've had a couple orders that got hung up in the post. Uh, USPS uh, Advantage Plus or whatever they call it. And it's taking like eight days to get to, to uh, Connecticut or Massachusetts stuff ends up looking like cooked spinach. So I've either reshipped or refunded. I don't have any problems with that. I want to take care of my customers as best as possible. If it wasn't for the customers, I wouldn't be here. So they are the important ones. Now I got to catch out back there in that tank. There are two female crevences and they are the ones I am shipping. And I'm not going to release this video until he gets them because it's going to be kind of a surprise. I'm not telling. I'm just telling. Him I'm shipping some stuff. Keep an eye out for it. He's got a a, a bunch of crevices that he bought. I think from Aquahuna, and he's he's had them for a while now. And he's pretty sure they're all males. And it's possible because I know they don't sex. They just pull. So we'll see. So now I got to get fish in a bag, and then seal the bag. So let's see if we can pull this off. And, and I was watching Michael's fish room. And what, he, what he does is he uh, ties a knot in the bag. And these are shorter bags. They're, uh, I think, 14 inches. I've got some other 16 inch bags, but I'm gonna see if I can get away with about, I don't know, uh, yeah, three or four inches of water and then a couple inches of air and, and then twist it and knot it. And I did a test bag the other day where I knotted it and left it upside down for three, four days and it didn't leak a drop. So hopefully that'll be the case with these guys. And then I will double bag them. We can stand the water. And yeah, in this measuring cup. There we are. And then uh, see if we can get that little fishy out. And here's one. And let's not forget a piece of stuff's called and I cut the label off, didn't I? Um, poly filter. All right, now let's see if we can get a... So I'm gonna twist this all the way up. Make the fish dizzy. And then this is the hard part because there's just barely enough bag. But I think I got it all the way through tug really really tight from the top of the knot not the bottom I don't want to pull the bag loose start over that would suck and there's one just cuz yeah it's still cinching up a little bit turn it over I don't think it's gonna leak so and then I'll cut the excess off Let's kind of clean it up that's one thing Michael and Michael Fisherman said that he learned from somebody else cut the the tail off so it, it just looks more professional and there we are, that's the first one. All righty, let's see if I got about. I think this one needs a little more water. I guess what I should have done was seen how much, or measured how much water I put in the first one. Have a reference point. Yeah, it looks better. Okay, so measuring cup again to hold the bag. And then these are going out today and they're going out with the priority flat rate. So hopefully two days. There we go. 
I've had these for about a year and a half, so I know they are female, and they color up nicely. They're pretty flushed out right now because they are not happy. And then the piece of poly filter, or whatever that was called, what did I say? Poly filter. Twist that as tight as possible. And then wrap it around, shove it through the hole. Make sure the whole end comes out. Cinch up on the knot. Now I've got a bunch more of these uh, albino crebensis, and I will be selling them. Probably about $10 a piece plus shipping. Shipping is the expensive part, and I can't afford to do the free shipping on the fish as much as I would like to be able to. Yeah, here's the box. So I'm going to have to put some other filler in the box here. So there's plenty of room. The two fish and the plants. And so what I need to do is stuff some things around. So that's what it looks like. And it's ready to go. I just need to stuff it, tape it, label it, and off to the post office we go. I guess what I should also do, it occurs to me, double bag the fish. Just in case. And so what I'm going to do is try and get them in there upside down so the knot is at the bottom of the bag. And then I have a heat sealer. So I think I'll just heat seal these. Get the bag open. Grab the fish. Kind of upside down there. Just kind of thread it into the bag. And then when it collapses, do it again. There we go. And then push the knot up against the bottom of the double bag. And I'm going to go heat seal these. And then I'll be right back. I hope you got something out of it. Uh, how to line a box. Pretty easy. And there's a couple different materials you can obviously use. You know, in this case, I'm using the priority uh, flat rate. If it fits, it ships. I could put gold bullion in here to ship for the same price, apparently. I don't know if there's a limit. There's probably a limit on these things, like like 60 pound limit or something like that, so you don't ship too much gold. Hopefully that's uh, that's somewhat instructional. And I uh, can't wait to get this up, because more importantly, I can't wait for him to get this at the other end. I think that's gonna be really cool. It's gonna be a nice surprise, I hope. I hope they get there in one piece. That's the big deal. So uh, this is my first uh, attempt to ship fish. And like I said, I've shipped a lot of plants. So anyway, we'll change the plan. Everything was going in this box, this uh, medium flat rate. It's going to fit in one of these small priorities. These are not flat rate. Um, they charge a little more for them. But everything's not going to slosh around in here. Everything should fit nicely. Now, also, I double bagged the fish. Right, We saw that. I put them in upside down, then I heat sealed them. And then the plants on top. And I was going to have stuff all kinds of paper around the other one. And these should be okay. Hopefully things are starting to cool down a little bit. And so I scrapped together pieces for this one. I'm going to have to black out the previous label on this. I've got these. This one was already taped up. I thought, well, what the hell, I'll just use it. Uh, but it's got a label on it. So there's a nice fit, and it's tight inside. It's not going to slop around. So I like this. This, this should work better.